As the epidemic petered out, the source of the cholera remained a mystery. But Koch refused to give up. He had a lead in the shape of a bacillus found in the gut. He wanted to pursue his research in a place with cholera. One month later, he arrived in India with his assistants Gafki and Fischer. As soon as he arrived, Koch made a crucial observation. Whereas Pasteur thought cholera was passed on by air, Koch and his team understood the key role of water. He noticed how each time the locals washed their clothes soiled by cholera in sources of drinking water, the sickness spread. The doctor continued his hunt for the agent responsible. And three weeks later, he sent a triumphant communique to Berlin. I can conclude that the bacillus found in the gut of infected patients is indeed the pathogenic bacillus behind cholera. We have identified what differentiates its bacteria. The bacillus is in the shape of a comma. With tuberculosis and cholera, Koch had identified the two most deadly microbes in the world. In May 1885, he was appointed professor at the Institute of Hygiene in Berlin. His fame now equaled that of Pasteur. The Frenchman even lagged behind the German, since he had made no major discoveries on human illnesses. It was time for him to take on a scourge that struck terror into the heart of man, passed on by the bite of a dog, fox, or wolf, rabies. The symptoms of rabies are terrifying. Hallucinations, convulsions, a phobia of water, savage behavior. Once infection is confirmed, certain death follows. There is no treatment. Rabies wasn't, however, a priority. It only led to a handful of fatalities a year, nothing in comparison to the thousands who fell victim to tuberculosis. But it had one feature that Pasteur found very interesting. Rabies begins with a bite, then the wound heals. Nothing happens. Then two, three, four, sometimes six months later, the disease appears. This time lag changed everything. Unlike the vaccine for smallpox or anthrax, which must be administered before infection by the disease, with rabies, one could vaccinate a victim who had already been bitten and head the disease off. The vaccine would also be the remedy, a potentially spectacular breakthrough. But Pasteur faced a problem he had not dealt with before. The microbe was invisible. It was, in fact, a virus, much smaller than bacteria and impossible to see with microscopes of the day. Pasteur therefore had to work by deduction. After weeks of trials with his disciple, Dr. Roux, he succeeded in vaccinating a dog, then a second one, and then more. This was animal experimentation, but the passage from experiments on animals to experiments on human subjects, scientifically speaking, should have been a long way off. There wasn't sufficient testing to switch to any trials of treatment on a person. Le chat était enragé. Il s'est jeté sur lui, docteur. 
Je ne suis pas docteur, madame. Ou examinez-le, s'il vous plaît. Monsieur, on dit que vous soignez la rage. Oh, soignez Non, madame. Non, nous essayons de vacciner pour empêcher la maladie de se déclarer. Mais de toute façon, le vaccin n'est pas prêt. Mais on dit pourtant que vous vaccinez des chiens. Oui, madame, comme vous dites, ce ne sont que des chiens. Monsieur Pasteur, je sais ce que c'est que la rage. Je vous en prie, vaccinez-le. Ce n'est pas si simple, il y a des risques. Il y a même de très gros risques, madame. Alors vous n'allez rien faire Comment t'appelles-tu, mon bonhomme Joseph, monsieur. Joseph Meister. It's hard to imagine what Pasteur, who had lost two children to infectious disease, might have felt before this boy, who was perhaps doomed to die if he didn't act. It's hard to imagine the anguish he may have felt. It had worked with dogs, but there was no guarantee it would work on a human. Roux was firmly against it. Roux was a doctor, and it was he who performed the injections. On top of this, he'd written his thesis on rabies, so if he could challenge Pasteur on anything, it was that. No, it's too risky. You saw these wounds. If we don't take the risk, this child will go away. Oui, mais même si le chien est enragé, c'est pas sûr que le petit soit infecté. Ce qui est sûr, c'est que s'il est infecté, il va mourir. Oui ou non Oui, monsieur. Et vous voulez le laisser mourir Qu'est-ce que vous direz à sa mère si on ne fait rien Oui, si on échoue. Ce sont des dizaines d'autres gosses qu'on pourra jamais sauver. Mais je sais bien, vous. C'est un risque, un gros risque, mais... Vous êtes jeune. Vous pouvez attendre. Meister had been bitten 48 hours previously. If the disease was present, it would not be for a matter of weeks, which left plenty of time to test a vaccine. And what's more, he was Alsatian. How could this be overlooked for Pasteur with his fierce hatred of Germans? He had the boy examined by two doctor acquaintances, Ludpian and Granchet, who confirmed the bites were serious. Meister was no doubt contaminated. Almost secretly, Pasteur took the plunge. Le docteur Grancher va te faire une première piqûre au ventre. Ça va faire un petit peu mal, mais c'est nécessaire, tu comprends? Je vais essayer de pas pleurer. Tu sais, si tu pleures un peu, ce n'est pas bien grave. Mais il y en aura d'autres, tu le sais, ça? Plus que dix? Un petit peu plus. Alors on y va, Joseph? Mm. For two weeks, Joseph was injected with nerve tissue infected with weakened rabies. Each day, the dose administered was increased, so his body would become accustomed to it. But one doubt remained. What if Meister did not have rabies? How could they prove the vaccination had worked? That was the aim of the 13th and final injection. He needed that crucial test. And at the end of the treatment with Joseph Meister, he injected him with rabies. At the end of the course, he had him injected with totally virulent nerve tissue, which would have given Meister rabies if he had not been protected by the previous injections. For him, this was the validation of his theory. But you can see why today this type of treatment would be unacceptable. Tu as réussi, Louis. Tu l'as sauvé. My dear friend, I think something amazing has occurred. Joseph Meister came out of the laboratory. The child is in fine health this morning. He has a good appetite and no longer has any fever. One of the great medical feats of the century is underway. This time, Pasteur was sure of himself. He could repeat his exploit, this time giving it maximum publicity. He chose to vaccinate Jean-Baptiste Jupille, 
a shepherd boy who was bitten saving his friends from a rabid dog. It was an ideal story to promote his vaccine. In the following weeks, people came from around the world to be vaccinated in Paris. Faced with such success, the Academy of Sciences opened an international subscription to found an institute. Pasteur was a hero. 